Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the On Time, On Target morning show. Today, we are going to talk about inflation, which I've been getting a lot of questions about lately. And we're going to talk about, are we in a period of inflation? Is it already here? Is it coming? What causes it? Is it all the spending that the government is doing? Uh, a lot of different topics on the kind of history uh, and what to do uh, for, for inflation. You know, is it here or is it not here? Is it coming? And then secondly, the part of that is what to do, how to invest in it to either make money or at least protect what you've got. Uh, right. So we know that there are some things that come with inflation, such as higher interest rates and that the Federal Reserve will try to keep in, you know, could possibly keep inflation under control by raising rates, uh, which obviously has a direct impact on the stock market. So that's what we're going to talk about today. I've got the uh, longs and shorts up in the chat room as uh, well. Let me get the question in here. And there we go. All right, for catching us on replay, thank you so much for uh, checking us out. Make sure you hit subscribe, click the notification bell, and you'll get notified as soon as this goes uh, on the internet every day. And if you want to join us live, you know, there's a chat window and a Q&A window that you don't see that are off the screen. And that's how the squadron members communicate with me. It's 25 bucks to be in here, you know, about a buck a day to come into the room and be able to ask me anything you want during the show uh, through the Q&A and the chat window. And with that, let's go ahead and get started. back everyone here is our lineup card for today may 6th there you go uh, make sure you have your q a window and your chat window set up appropriately standard disclaimer applies make sure you do all of your due diligence before acting upon anything here in this financial education presentation full disclaimer information is available at ototnow.com all right mission objectives grow our money protect our money live off our money really when we're talking about today's uh inflation you can argue about whether it's here or not we'll talk about that here in a second but um, certainly what to do when it is here or what to do to position for the inevitability of it. You know, those, those sorts of things with our portfolio. I'm thinking more towards protecting what I've got instead of trying to, um, trying to uh, you know, make money off of the inflationary environment, right? So <clears throat> there are ways to try to get long on inflation, but they're pretty narrow. Mostly it's just protection of what you got. The question today is what causes inflation? So we'll get into that as we uh, once we get the uh, open done here. <clears throat> Sorry, as far as our flow. I see questions coming in the chat. Thank you. We will get to those, I promise. As far as our flow, long, short, open, short, long, we're going to do a market review, headline review. We're going to look at long-term investments, all of which do well under inflation. So gold, silver, uh, Bitcoin kind of new as far as the uh, inflationary environment because we really haven't had a huge inflationary environment really since the 80s and Bitcoin of course didn't exist then <clears throat> but it's the same philosophy a store of value uh, over time you have PPTY which is really just real estate and then you have the S&P 500 stocks yes do well in an inflationary environment so you know that's something to consider and then also bonds uh, so we'll get into why bonds might do well during an inflationary environment and uh, once we get into uh, that portion. All right, short term uh, execution. I do have a couple longs and a couple shorts. You see the futures are in the red. Uh, so I like the shorts better. And the only one I really like is Invax, uh, in Novavax. They had a phase two uh, trial come out on a COVID strain and uh, it's selling off for it. I didn't read the report, obviously, but certainly uh, negative news <clears throat> for Novavax there. Uh, so that's in the chat window. Let me hit that up real quick again. Saw somebody pop in the room. Good morning. Here's the end of the chat. It goes. Why is it not going? Maybe it's not going to go into the chat. 
Anyhow, here's what we're little. I'll get to that in a minute uh, instead of typing it again. All right, let's go ahead and contingencies and academic resources are standard. All right, since I can't type in the chat for whatever reason, here's your uh, TD Ameritrade Think Pipes platform. We are looking at BCRX Long. Uh, we're looking at BUD, B U D, that's Anheuser Busch InBev. Uh, Bud Long, these are both earnings plays. And then our short is again Invax, which had the, uh, the report out this morning. Um, and it's obviously uh, selling off because of that. All right, trying this one more time in the chat to see if we can get it copied and pasted. There we go. All right, that's uh, how everything looks there. All right, let's go ahead and go to cnbc.com. Let's go around the world and check things out as far as the futures. Uh, you can see our futures in the green a little bit there, just uh, in the NASDAQ a little bit in the red, really not moving much. <clears throat> Over in Europe, not moving much either, and mixed. Asia, pretty big move up in Japan, but the other two have not really moved that much. Here's our numbers from yesterday, kind of a weird day, right? <clears throat> We had a sell-off alert in early in the day and then kind of gained a little back towards the end. But mostly, you know, portfolios I have are pretty tech-centric, so most of them ended up in the red yesterday based off the NASDAQ. And it's like four days in a row the NASDAQ's been uh, in the red. So uh, kind of a big sell-off in tech, if you will, that's going on right now. All right, the 10-year. This is, we'll pause here for a second. So this is what every, got everybody excited about inflation is back, gosh, I want to say it was two months ago, maybe. So when you think of the new administration, uh, they get inaugurated and we have a stimulus bill. So a lot of spending. I can't remember the trillions. Uh, I think it was three, 3.1, 3.2, somewhere in there. So we have a bunch of trillions coming out into the economy. We have stimulus checks coming out. Uh, now, uh, now that that is approved, we have a um, infrastructure bill that has a bunch of spending incorporated in it. So immediately the storyline, a lot of this got politicized, uh, was that this is all going to cause inflation. So that drove the 10 year higher, which is the, the upper left one here. So when you think of going higher, okay, it's like, boy, that looks like a pretty small number. It is. Uh, but they got up to a 1.7, almost a 1.8%. <clears throat> and it wasn't really the the, the move itself, it was the size, size and pace of the move, if you will, versus the, how do I want to say it, the, the overall move, if you will. So in other words, 1.8 is still pretty small is what I'm trying to say. But the fact that it increased from 1.5 to almost 1.8 so quickly is it spooked everybody into thinking that we're going to get inflation slash you know, hyperinflation uh, out, of the, out of the 10 years. So that was kind of the initial indicator. And if you remember, that spooked markets pretty good. Um, it, you know, the, we thought, okay, well, at that point, the economy is going to run out of control and the Fed's going to have to raise interest rates, even though the Fed has not said uh, any such thing. So again, that's an indicator. That's why we talk about it every day. The fact that it's below 1.6 is a good thing. It shows that everything is currently under control. You can, of course, make an argument that uh, inflation is coming. I don't really agree with you, but we'll get with that in a second. Uh, oil uh, at 65, so above the normal 40 to 60 range. Uh, gold and silver creeping up. So sure, I still think gold is, remember gold was up closer to 2000 here not that long ago. So really, if you're, if you're convinced today, you're like, okay, I'm listening because inflation was in the title. Uh, buy gold, GLD is your best bet. Pay the, pay the uh, little bit of the expense fee for them to hold your gold for you. That's really going to be the big play, if you will. Uh, silver is not used to be underpriced. It's not really that underpriced anymore relative to gold. So I think gold's your, your better play. You can get off into copper and palladium, palladium, platinum, blah, blah, blah. If you want, uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't even bother uh, with that. I would just stick with uh, pure gold, if you will. All right, and in crypto, you, know, you, could, you could go into Bitcoin because of the inflationary environment. And you know, if you get into crypto, you know, yesterday we talked about Dogecoin. Um, we have Saturday Night Live coming up, so Doge probably going to continue higher. Um, but the that's because Elon Musk is is hosting to finish that thought. But um, Bitcoin is another place where you can store value because everything is going to inflate together. All right, let's come back to the headlines and we'll talk inflation specifically. All right, jobs number in this morning. Pretty good, if you will, didn't really move the market. Some Moderna news, Moderna's down 9% this morning. Um, you know, I like Pfizer better. So of the Moderna, BioNTech, I, I like, you know, just go straight Pfizer is how I play it, if you will. Nice dividend too. Um, solid company, multiple ways to win. It's not really specifically focused 
kind of like BNTX is or Moderna, they're kind of all in on vaccine stuff, right? Saw that if you want to go to space, it's going to be $500,000 a seat to go up to into space for 10 minutes. That was a Blue Origin price from yesterday, not a SpaceX, but Blue Origin, you know, Bezos, uh, $500,000 for 10 minutes in space. And people will pay it. You know they will. Okay, that's it for the uh, headlines. So let's get in and look at what are some options as far as the uh, ways to invest. So the first one's the GLD. So let's take a look at that chart. Um, <clears throat> GLD, and we'll see kind of the history of gold. Gold's a thing. So when you think inflation, um, so first of all, you know, we'll skip ahead a little bit with uh, 10 Bitcoins. Yeah, you're, you're right. Or 10 Kabillion Doge coins, right? So what causes inflation? I'll get to some of the chat stuff here too, uh, as well. Let's clear this off. It's like stop it ads. Okay, so uh, what causes inflation? Let, let's be honest. It's either a shortage or um, a monopoly really is what causes it. It's not government spending that causes it. And again, that's looking in the rearview mirror. So if you look at 2007 and 2009, we dumped all kinds of money into the into the you know, economy with quantitative easing and stuff. And everybody cried inflation, hyperinflation, stagflation, deflation, all this inflation stuff. Well, that it, nothing happened. And, and, you know, nothing significant happened, I should say. Uh, it was a non-factor coming out of the quantitative easing. So what are we doing now? We're doing quantitative easing again. Uh, you know, some people call it the helicopter money from Bernanke when he was talking about helicopters dumping money down on people. Just because there's more money out there, that doesn't mean the prices go up. Now, so what does cause it? Well, a shortage. So let's talk about like the housing market. Um, people think, well, we have inflation because housing has gone up, you know, 10% almost nationwide, 20%, uh, 30% here in Austin, you know, Scottsdale, Denver, some of the hotter areas as people flee California. Um, so some of that's localized, but nationwide, it's about 10%, right? So is that inflation? No, it's not. It is a, that's supply and demand. So that's more of a shortage. So why do we have a housing shortage? Here's why. COVID happened. You remember that guy? Uh, and people decided they don't want to live in the city anymore. So people are moving out of the city and they are going into, they want to get away from other people. So therefore the popularity of single family homes goes through the roof. So that makes sense. So there's more demand, if you will, which is causing those prices to go higher, right? Inflation is more purchasing power. Uh, you know, the value of your dollar dropping. It's like, no, houses just got more expensive. But as we see it with gasoline all the time, there's an ebb and flow based off of supply and demand when really nothing else is changing. You know, the price of milk isn't changing just because the price of oil gets over 60, right? But you will see gasoline prices. But that's what people see. And that's what people tie inflation to is, <clears throat> hey, my house value, I can't afford a house anymore. So therefore we must have inflation. It's like, well, no, actually just houses are more expensive. Or every time I go to the gas pump, I'm paying more. It's like, well, that's because gas is more expensive. It doesn't mean everything's more expensive. But uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. All right, our tips. What are tips? First of all, those are treasury inflation protected securities. Um, you can get into tips if you want. They pay basically nothing is the only problem. So you have, you can be right, be like, yes, let's go into those, but they aren't really going to move and they pay like a percent. So it's like, why would I take any risk at all if I to get 1%, if I can get 0.6% or whatever you're getting out of your high yield uh, savings. So there's kind of a, yeah, it's a good idea, but it's generally not worth your time, to be honest. <clears throat> if you are in retirement and you're in the super protection mode, then yeah, that, that is a way to play it. Or if we started getting significant um, <clears throat> inflation, if you will, to where now interest rates aren't down at 1%, say the 10 year goes back to a three to 4%. And it's like, well, that opens up the door to all kinds of things. Uh, you know, CDs. Oh gosh, we haven't talked about CDs in decades. Well, why? Because it, they don't pay anything. Um, <clears throat> so so you, the conversation would switch um, significantly. And you know, what I like to say, people are like, what's your investment strategy? And I like to say, well, I'm going to take what the market will give me. Meaning, I don't know, but, you know, it depends on the environment of the market. It has been tech on fire, US based for a long time, and it still kind of is, but that could switch, right? <clears throat> and if we switch them, we switch our investment strategy. Does it, does it hit uh, higher dividend stocks? Well, here's the issue with that is it's good for the market overall because things appreciate and stocks are assets and you know assets appreciate with uh, inflation. So <clears throat> yes, that's true. The problem is what hits the market is when the Fed tries to keep inflation under control by increasing interest rates. Um, and then that 
causes the market to sell off. So if you're going to hold through the whole thing, then you can easily stay uh, in your stocks. You just got to hold through the dip and you're going to get that dividend coming in the whole time. But if, uh, you know, this is a short term issue or you're in retirement, you don't want to see your portfolio drop, then no a dividends paying stock is not a uh, safe place to be. All right, let's get through the market open. We will come back to inflation here in a little bit. <clears throat> we have 30 seconds of the market open and let me get set up here for it. All right, good morning, everyone. We have 15 seconds to the market open. Welcome to the on-time, on-target play of the day. You have four screens in front of you on the TD Ameritrade Think Pipes, Think Pipes platform. These are all one-minute charts for us to watch as the market opens here in a couple seconds. Wait for the bell. So there's the opening bell. The market's about flat. Again, this is why we keep the spy right here. We can watch the one minute uh, bouncing up and down. BCRX is an er long play on earnings. You see a little bit lower on the volume uh, as well as Bud, which is Budweiser, Bush, uh, excuse me, Budweiser, AB InBev, Anheuser-Busch uh, InBev <coughs> company ticker Bud. You can see it's up in our window of the five to 10% for both of these long. <clears throat> excuse me our short story if you will is novavax over here which got a negative story out of one of its um <clears throat> phase two releases for covid so we're going to let it set the high of the day and then come in and we'll use about a two dollar stop so i'm going to take this pretty quick if it hits down below 158 there we go take it at 158 or 157 wherever you can grab it here um, and put covered above the high of the day so again that's 160. <clears throat> That's what you're risking. We're trying to make three times this amount. So it's gonna to have to go from 158 to 156, 154, 152 is our actual exit point. But it busted out just like yesterday, man. Uh, busting out of these trades within uh, within seconds, not even the first minute there. Uh, <clears throat> so as soon as it exits out the top of the trade, you have to give up on the trade and uh, and just admit admit defeat, come back another day. Again, with our strategy, uh, we have it set up to where we lose one risk unit when we lose. Uh, but we have it set up to make three times that when we win. So really, we only need to win 25% uh, of the time, win being, being correct in the trade, <clears throat> in order for this strategy to, uh, to pay off. Again, I don't go back into a trade after it busts out because of wash sale rules. But certainly, if you are a professional trader, <clears throat> you could watch this thing go up even more, set a new high of the day, and then turn around and continue to sell off. I think it sells off uh, throughout the day. All right. Let's go ahead and back out over to the big picture stuff. Not even gonna look at any of the other short-term trades because we're gonna go back and talk about inflation some more. <clears throat> we really only scratched the surface. Uh, these blue bars, the new person in the room, uh, these blue bars are days. So again, this, this was while the market's open is the dark blue. So here we had the big sell-off. This was when Janet Yellen, who's at the treasury now, start, made some comment about the Fed increasing interest rates that caused this big sell-off. And then she tried to walk back the rest of the day. <clears throat> which kind of sold and we're basically flat uh, from here. Over on the big board off the left, we have nickel up five, <clears throat> excuse me, 5% voices given out this morning. Other than that, too, not too many names really in motion. Uh, when I was looking for longs and shorts today, it was kind of painful sorting through things because there's not a whole lot in play, even though we're in earnings season. <clears throat> so you have nickel up, other than that, nothing's really moving up in a big way. To the downside, you have clickstream, now it went up you know, like 30% yesterday. So that's just selling off BNTX we talked about and Moderna getting out of both those names and going into Pfizer is a smart move. CRISPR Therapeutics, I like it, but it's been selling off lately. MNMD is what we're going to talk about tomorrow. That's Mind Medicine. And then we have a bunch of basically tech. Uh, when I look through here is what I'm seeing as far as the other big red names. So it kind of looks like the names are, are, you know, a lot more red than there is green uh, out there. <clears throat> All right, let's go back and talk inflation some more because there's so much to talk about here. All right, so we talked about can you hide in dividend stocks? So it's kind of if you are a buy and hold as your strategy, then yeah, you just hold your dividend stocks through an inflationary environment, through an increase in interest rates, and you turn around and you reinvest the dividends, right? That's what you do because that's your strategy. <clears throat> if you are an income generation strategy, so you think there's capital appreciation, which is making money capital preservation, which is protecting your money. And then there's income generation, which is where now you take all the money you spent a lifetime earning and you stop trying to make money with it. You try to generate income. So therefore you're in your bonds, uh, bond funds, your anything that produces income like your high dividend stocks. 
<clears throat> some private equity stuff that kicks off a regular payment. There you're looking for stability of cash flow is your priority, not a total return mentality. So that can be tough, right? If you have a million dollars and <clears throat> say COVID uh, hit. So COVID hit last year, which it did. Um, and your million dollar portfolio is now saying like it's at 810,000. It's like, well, and people were starting to get concerned, rightfully so, right? Um, but it's the, well, <clears throat> we're okay with that because it's still generating that 50,000 a year or 45,000 a year or 4,000 a month to your bank account. All of that part is working fine. It's just the fact that the number at the top is changing, moving up and down. But when you're in income generation, <clears throat> you don't care. Of course you care, but you care. You don't care as much, if you will. <clears throat> so can you hide out in there? If that's your strategy, in other words, uh, buy and hold forever. Yep. Or income generation, you simply, <clears throat> you can hide out there. Um, these, these stocks will appreciate along with, um, <clears throat> uh, along with uh, inflation. So let's talk about some other stuff. Um, <clears throat> I don't look seeing Peloton. Let's pull it up here. On a, I'm pulling up on the, uh, <clears throat> that recall was a while ago though, right? Hmm. Looks like maybe they had another one because the stock sold off yesterday, 98 down to 82. Uh, it's kind of bouncing today. So again, the move was made yesterday. So as far as a short candidate, <clears throat> it's not set up today. It was set up yesterday and it did not happen at the market open. It looked like it happened about a half an hour after the market open when they announced. So if you're a full-time trader and you're staring at a screen and you get a headline like that, you can hop in and trade it. But as far as it being a headline going into the open, <clears throat> didn't really uh, didn't really work for us. Okay, let's talk about the uh, definition of inflation. <clears throat> Loss of purchasing power over time is probably your best bet <clears throat> for the definition there. understanding it, what causes it, just because there's more money out there and we're spending does not cause it. It's, uh, it's basically, it has to be a shortage or a monopoly of sorts. <clears throat> you could argue that we do have monopolies out there. I actually kind of think that we do. Um, you know, the big companies, the Apples, the Facebooks, the Amazons, but they're not price gouging us or they're not yet anyway. I mean, really when you, you could say, well, iPhones are expensive. It's like, oh, come on. I mean, yeah, I get it true twelve hundred dollars for a phone is kind of ridiculous if you're buying the top of the end stuff but look at the like 18 devices you don't have to buy because you have that you don't have to buy a watch anymore because you carry a watch with you in your phone you don't have to carry a flashlight with you because you have one you don't have to carry a calculator with you because you have one how about a camera hanging around your neck you don't need that because you have one alarm clocks you don't need those anymore because you already have one gps you already have one i mean <clears throat> so yeah they're not cheap for sure, but it's replacing a whole slew of things uh, in your life. <clears throat> All right. Built-in inflation. So let's talk about that real quick. Uh, the Fed, you know, part of their two, they keep uh, full employment and keep inflation under control. That's their charter of the Federal Reserve. Well, they target about a 2% inflation and they want things to inflate 2%. <clears throat> things that stay sideways forever is not good. That's a topic for another day. But again, they're targeting that 2% inflation. And Powell has said he's even willing to let the economy run hot, meaning get up to that 3% inflation before he moves interest rates. So that's why I think we're going to see you know, things clip, clip along maybe at the two to 3% rate, but I don't think it's going to be enough to inspire the Fed to raise rates. And that's what hits the market, <clears throat> if you will. Otherwise, we just enjoy the ride of, uh, you know, our stocks inflating right along with it. All right, we got into the rising goods and services. So here's the issue with inflation is there's price inflation and there's wage inflation. If wage inflation, meaning what you get paid at work, if that goes up commensurate with what you're having to pay, price inflation for your goods and services, well, <clears throat> then that's okay, right? And that's what the Fed wants. It's everything to just increase across the board at 2% over time, everybody's, everybody's happy, that works. The issue is when prices go up and wages do not. Well, wages don't automatically inflate, right? Um, they're determined by bosses and companies uh, that determine what you make out there. <clears throat> and if you get in there and artificially inflate the wage, i.e. through legislation and make like a mandatory minimum wage or increase that minimum wage, there's already is one, but <clears throat> you increase it or double it, um, you get into a situation to where <clears throat> now the companies, instead of saying, okay, they either simply just pass that through to the customer by increasing the price of their goods and services, i.e. seems like inflation, 
or they hire less people. And then now you get into a potential unemployment problem, which we really don't have because we're still kind of recovering <clears throat> nicely from COVID, if you will, as far as, uh, as far as employment. But the, if wages don't inflate, then yeah, things costing more is, is a uh, real problem out there. <clears throat> so when was the last time inflation was at 3%? As far as I know, it was the 1980s. And that's where, if you think back, like my first house was in the 90s, uh, but it was a 7% interest rate. I do remember in, in <clears throat> the 80s seeing, you know, 5% CDs and inter <coughs> excuse me, interest rates over, over 10%. So really, I don't think we've had any inflation <clears throat> of note, certainly not to 3% level for literally decades. And if we didn't have it in 2007 to 2009, that's why I don't think we're going to see it, you know, driven necessarily by the government spending that's going on uh, right now. <clears throat> All right, good questions out there. All right, how to profit from it. Here's what I want to close with before my voice uh, gives out. So <clears throat> several asset classes perform well in an inflationary environment. So this is kind of the point of... Steve, you may or may not be right. And that's what, you know, when you're an investor, you don't, you're not always right, right? So you have to plan for all the possibilities and then tilt your portfolio towards what you think is the most likely, but you don't go all in on any specific scenario. That's why we don't just own one stock, right? You own a bunch and you know what? They don't all go up on the same day, right? There's protection there. So <clears throat> same sort of thing. If you think there's inflation, you don't go all in on gold. You could, but then if you're wrong, then, then life sucks for you, right? Because you were wrong and you cost yourself a bunch of money. <clears throat> but so what performs well? Tangible assets. Talked about uh, gold, silver, uh, property. PPTY is another holding that I have, which is U.S. real estate uh, property. Uh, real estate investment trusts tend to do well, and they also pay a nice juicy dividend. Um, commodities, I don't deal in steel and concrete and orange juice and you know, things like that, but those are more futures type things. But you certainly, I do have one investor that's big into that stuff. I just don't have the time to track it um, and, you know, become an expert on it and maintain like I do with individual stocks. But <clears throat> commodities also, the pricing power tends to inflate along uh, with them. So I would say, you know, you look at this, it's like PPTY and GLD. That's going to be your holdings. <clears throat> um, specialized securities. Here's your inflation index bond so you can get into the tips. Um, there are certain there are things out there that just don't pay a whole lot right now. So you can get into those, but you're not making anything. You're just protecting what you got. And if you're going to do that, why not keep it in the bank? I think, you know, if you're making a percent or less, that's kind of like, why bother? Now you get up in that 2%, like I have a municipal bonds fund that I'm a big fan of right now. It's making just over 2%. And you're like, woohoo. Well, it's still 2%, right? It's not zero. So we're making money on it. And that's the, uh, the important part. <clears throat> All right. Securitized debt, you can get into debt instruments. I'm not really going to, uh, to cover those today. <clears throat> Where is my other sheet? What didn't I, uh, so gold, silver, Bitcoin, PPTY, SPY or fixed. Okay, here's the issue with bonds. Um, <clears throat> if interest rates increase, your bo individual bonds are worth less if you try to sell them. Well, we're not trying to sell them. Generally, we have bonds, we hold them to maturity. So therefore, we're in a bond ladder. So it really doesn't matter. We just get whatever the, uh, the, the purchasing power is there. Now, where, where inflation will drive bonds to go higher is kind of a, as a derivative effect. So you have inflation. So if we have inflation, then the Fed eventually will raise interest rates. And when the Fed raises interest rate, the market tends to sell off. And when the market sells off, bonds tend to increase in value. So there's a lot of, you know, what if daisy chain reaction stuff there. Uh, so that's why you kind of don't know how bonds are going to react when interest rates go up. They're technically worth less because newer bonds are worth more. So therefore, all existing bonds are now worth less. So you'd think the price would go down. But you also have the offsetting of money flow out of the market and into bonds because interest rates are going up. And there's anticipation that the market's going to sell off because it pretty much always has. And rising interest rates can be you know, an indication of a looming recession. Uh, and I will say that it's a, it's a, it's not a good, it's not a one for one indicator. So uh, I think the joke is, you know, the last 26, uh, you know, raising interest rates has predicted 26 of the last seven recessions, something like that. So anyhow, you can get to be to where you get the specter of recession when it's not really there, right? So it can be over predicting, if you will, which, which almost means it's useless. But <clears throat> all seven of the recessions we've had, 
have been in a rising interest rate environment. So you do have to give it some uh, credibility there. Um, so anyhow, that's what's going on in bonds. Not really a place to hide out or make money, but you might not be adversely affected in your big bond position in your portfolio. So, all right, that's uh, enough for today. So what is the bottom line out there? Uh, gold, silver, and real estate are places where you wanna be. Everything else comes with some risk. Um, however, overall for the market, your assets will inflate just like all the other assets uh, out there. Um, so really you don't mind the inflation until the Fed starts taking action on raising interest rates. And then that's when you have to take action in your portfolio. But that's not just based off inflation, that's off of the off of the Fed's reaction to the inflation. So, all right, thanks for joining me this morning. Kind of a complex topic. Hopefully uh, hopefully you know more than you did when you showed up this morning. Uh, but again, we could go on for hours and hours about uh, inflation. We kind of just scratched the surface uh, today. So with that, I'll see you back tomorrow morning. We're gonna talk uh, mind medicine unless something else jumps into the, uh, into the news cycle for us. So have a good one. We'll see you back tomorrow.